Hi, welcome to analysis and design of a flyback. This is uh, part eight. Uh, this video will discuss and show how to close the loop. Okay, so why do we want to close the loop? Well, what are we, what is it that we want to do? We want to uh, compensate the loop so that you can, can control the output. Okay, which is this first one. So we want to make sure that the output, in this case, the power supply that I'm uh, designing, I designed it for a 12 volt supply. And I want to make sure that my control is able to control it and maintain it at 12 volts. Okay. So how do I do this? Well, I need to control, or actually I mean, I need to construct a small signal model. Okay, small signal model. Okay, so how do you make a small signal model? Okay, what is it that you need to to do? Okay, well first you need a plant. Okay, and typically the plant in a power supply, you can think of it as the output filter. Okay, so the output filter would be considered your plant. Okay, second thing that you would need is uh, in the feedback loop you would need your sampling resistors. Okay because you're going to sample your output voltage and somehow you need to uh, feed back a little bit of that voltage back to the error amp. Okay, And the error amp decides which way to control the PWM. Okay? So the third that you need is an error amp. So got the error amp here. Okay? Now there's two types of feedback control. Okay, uh, the first one that was in, uh, first invented was this one, which is the uh, voltage mode control. And then much later, there was a second type of uh, feedback control, and that's the current mode. Okay, now depending on which you choose, whether you choose voltage mode or current mode, they affect your small signal model. So, how do they affect that? Okay. Well, let's discuss voltage mode since it was the first one that was uh, introduced. And when you have a voltage mode feedback control, the PWM, the transformer, the MOSFET, and all of that, that looks like a voltage source. Okay. And because you have a voltage source and you're using a flyback, the primary actually looks like a an inductor in series with the voltage source. Okay, and then you have your output capacitance, and then the ESR and your load. Okay, so what this does is since you have a L and you have a C you have two storage devices okay so you have a an inductor that stores and also the capacitor stores energy okay so this is considered to be a second order okay and since it's a second order it means that you're going to get a 180 degrees phase shift that's because the inductor will add 90 and the capacitor will add another 90. So you end up with a total of 180. Okay. So if you look at the frequency response, which is this here, okay, you'll see you'll have a, a flat part. And then depending on the Q of the circuit, you'll have this little peaking. Okay. And then it roll off in a straight line, but it'll have a slope of negative 40 dB per decade. Okay, so this frequency that you see here, you can consider that to be a pole, and you can calculate that by 2 pi square root of L and C. Okay. Then you see this little spot right here. Th 
this is a zero and that is determined by the combination of your capacitor and your ESR so this zero is calculated by one two pi the output capacitance times the ESR okay so what it does this does is because you have 180 degrees phase shift it's harder to compensate not that you can't but it can be done and to do it you need a type 3 error amp okay I won't go too much into the uh, type 3 error amp there I do have a, a video posted in there uh, which says how to compensate a loop on a voltage mode if you're interested I, I show how to compensate a voltage bone using type 3 so you can uh, watch that video okay so bottom line it's it's a little harder to compensate okay now what I'll be using is current mode feedback which is this here okay now because we're using a current mode PWM then the MOSFET the PWM, the transformer, everything, all of that can be modeled by a current source. Okay, so basically, current mode means that you're gonna uh, that looking back. Once you have the diode, when you look back into the diode, all of that looks like a uh, like a current source. Okay, now an inductor once you energize it store energy and you release it it becomes a current source okay so the inductor can be thought of as a current source as well okay okay so now I can use the analogy that if you have a voltage source And if you put a capacitor, okay, well, since the voltage source is connected across the capacitor, the capacitor does not have that much impact or effect on the voltage source, okay. Well, by the same token, in this case, the inductor that was here previously here has no effect, so basically. It disappears. Okay. So remember, there was an inductor here before, but because it's a current source, it effectively disappears. It simplifies. So now, instead of having an inductor here and a capacitor, two storage devices, you only have one. So this becomes a first order system. Okay and because it's a first order system you only have a 90 degree phase shift that's due to the capacitor and what does it do well it makes your compensation of your error amp much much easier okay so let's look at the frequency response okay you get the imaginary or I'm sorry the magnitude frequency and if you were to plot this uh, the frequency response you would get a flat spot and then at this point if you notice it breaks down anytime anytime it breaks down you have a pole okay now that pole is due to the output capacitor and your load basically this one and this one, that combination, gives you that pole. Okay, and then it breaks off into a negative 20 dB per decade. Okay, and then it flattens out again. And in, in this case, it you have uh, the the re frequency response breaks up, and if it breaks up, then it's a, a zero and the zero can be calculated by 2 pi 
C O that capacitor and the ESR. Okay. So that combination gives you a zero. That combination gives you a pole. Okay. So next error app. Okay. Now because we're using a current mode, okay, we're going to be using what is known as a type 2 error app. Okay. And this here is my sampling resistors. This would go to my V out. In this case I would have 12 volts and it samples and it's feeding back into the error app. Okay. Now the error app well, most of the time, will f uh, the feedback signal will be fed back into the inverting side of the uh, op amp, while the non-inverting will have a reference, V reference. Okay. Now, the one that I'm using, I believe, is five volts. Okay, it has an internal reference. Okay, so. Now, if you were to plot the frequency response of this, okay, oh, let me backtrack, okay. So the reference, or the error app, basically has three components. It has a resistor, and I call this the, the integrator resistor, and this I call the capacitor that's in series with the resistor, the integrator resistor, I call it my integrator cap, okay. So that's what I call C in for integrator, R in for uh, integrator resistance. And then from the output to the input, okay, you have this capacitor. And I call this my roll off, okay. This is my high frequency roll off, okay. So basically, you have a roll off uh, integrator cap and an integrator resistor. Okay. So once you have these uh, one, two, three, four, five components, then you're ready kind of to design or compensate. And to look at its frequency response, you're going to have a frequency response or should have a frequency response that looks very similar to this. Okay. So with the type 2, you will have a zero. And you can see that you have a zero because it's breaking up. And that is typically your integrator resistor times your integrator cap. Okay. So basically, let's see, these two will give you that that uh, zero okay and then you have a flat response like that and that can be determined by your integrator resistor divided by the parallel combination of these two okay these two are in parallel that and that okay so it's our uh, it's so the gain at that spot it's your integrator resistor divided by R1 in parallel with R2. Okay. And then you see the frequency breakdown. So that's a pole. And that is calculated by 2 pi uh, RIN, your integrator resistor, and your roll off cap. So basically, this pole is determined by that combination. Okay, so that combination gives you a pole, and this combination gives you the zero. Okay, so now basically, what we want to do is we want to identify our poles and zero in your uh, output stage. This is called the output stage. 
and this would be your error app okay so we want to put everything together now if you should recognize that this is the output filter put filter okay and this is the frequent response of your error app okay so to compensate you really have very simple rule basically rule number one you want to cancel the poles that are in your filter you want to cancel it with a zero in your error app okay what does it mean basically you want this frequency and this frequency to match up okay you want the same time constant basically okay and then the second rule is you want to cancel the zero of your filter here's a zero you want to cancel that with a pole let me put this like that. I'll put output filter and then I'll put error app. Okay, so this uh, zero that, that your output filter has, you want to cancel with by placing a pole right there. Okay, so what does it do? Okay, well when you add these two okay for uh, when you add these two then you get what is called the the total open loop gate okay so if you were to add this you can see here that this has no slope it's a zero slope but this one has a negative 20 DB slope so you end up if you add them you'll get something that looks like that okay so that would be the first interval okay so now we come to the second interval which is from here to here and if you notice this has negative 20 dB per decade however you have 0 dB per decade here Okay, so when you add them up, you still have a straight line. Okay, so you still end up with a negative 20 dB per decade. Okay, so now we go to the third interval. Okay, so we have a 0 dB here, but we have a negative 20 dB here. And you add them up. So you end up with a open loop gain. Total. That looks like that. Okay. So how do we do it? How do we implement it? Okay. Well, we implement it using spice. So here is the small signal model, okay? And here's my capacitor. Here's my ESR. And my capacitor, in this case, I'm using is 122 microfarad, and I have a ESR. I have an ESR of approximately 0.261, okay? this is my load resistor 24 ohms and then I'm feeding back across here and I haven't mentioned what this is but typically in a power supply you put a resistor anywhere from 10 to maybe 100 ohms okay and you usually put test points across that uh, 10 ohm resistor okay and typically I call it 
a venable a uh, venable resistor okay it's basically a test point okay and across the resistor you put a voltage source and in that voltage source you enable the AC and you and uh, set it to one a magnitude of one AC okay and then here you can see that I have my sampling resistor I have my voltage reference I have my integrator resistor integrator capacitor and roll off okay and then the output of my error amp goes to this now this is a spice element it's a G1 and it's a voltage control because the input is a voltage it's a uh, it's the input and it's uh, controlled by a voltage okay so it's a voltage control current source so the output is current okay so basically we're modeling everything that's before the diode okay by a current source okay so this is a voltage control current source now typically uh, one other thing that I want to add is notice that the arrow is pointing down I need the current to go up okay because if it goes down then the current would go in this direction and then flow up across my load and I would get a negative number so since I want the current to go the opposite I put a negative okay now the other thing that you have to set is the gain okay and basically since I want one volt here okay and I need basically I know that it's 12 volts is going to be my output right down, down 12 volts at 0.5 amps okay since this node is supposed to have 12 volts and I need half an amp okay well the gain of this in order provided that I have one volt here then I would need a gain of half to give me the half a map here okay so I set this to negative 0 0.5 okay so now that I have it, it it's already assembled okay now I can do oh let me backtrack again a little bit okay now in spice or particularly in top spice you can label nodes so I took the liberty of labeling this node as in and then I labeled this as out okay and then I define that by using what is called a uh, hash calc uh, command so this is a directive uh, tot splice directive so I put that uh, uh, calc and then I say gain is equal and it's the voltage of the output of out divided by in okay and then I also named or defined phase basically the same formula so now I have phase and gain defined and then to plot it I use the auto plot okay one means that I want both plots to be uh, the gain and the phase to be plot, plotted in the same graph okay so db means that it's going to give me the db gain in gain and then a will give me the angle of the face okay so these are the three spice directive uh, that I need and they're already defined then I can go ahead and press setup and I'm going to start frequency of one and I'm going to stop at one megahertz with a hundred points per decade okay so I press run and 
this is my plot. So if you notice, this is a this is my gain. Okay? And then this is the face. Okay. So now one thing that you want to look out is uh, where your gain crosses at zero, which is zero dB. And typically where it crosses you go up and that would be your gain margin. Okay. Now on this one, if this point was to dip or let's say your uh, well actually this doesn't look very good uh, but let's see if we can improve uh, the face in the game okay now one thing that you, you want to do is you want to look at the frequency response of your output stage okay so in this case since we want to want the frequency response of this basically we want to take a look at this here in other words we want to see how this would look okay so basically yes we want to see this so the way to do that is this is already at the right place but I'll go ahead and bring it up here just to make it a little bit more intuitive here's my output okay and then this end, I can bring it in and I'm going to put it at the output of the error amp. So it's going to give me the frequent response of this system. Okay, so it should give me the pole and the zero. Okay, okay, here you go. So if you'll notice, right here is my pole. Okay and then right here is a zero okay so let me put that this is my pole and this is the zero zero okay so this is the frequency response of the output filter now I had mentioned that you have a 90 degrees phase shift okay and this is close to 90 it's probably about 75 but this is the phase shift that I was talking about if this was a little bit further you it would go a little bit further and hit the 90 okay so this is the response that that we're looking at okay so now the next thing that we're interested in is okay uh, is let's take a look at the freq frequency response of the error app so we should look for something like this okay and to do that measurement we bring this back up here the input and I'll bring this to the output. Okay. So input output. So that should give us the frequency response of the error app. So I press run. And if you notice, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Okay. It looks a little different. Okay. But let's fix that. Okay. Now remember when we said that we're putting everything together in other words we're gonna see we're gonna match this time constant with this time constant and let's see if we can line that up first okay so let's go back okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this back up here this is gonna give us the total Let me backtrack. Let me go back. I'll put this one back here. Okay. And let's calculate the time constant of these two, which is the pole. Okay. So this time constant has to equal this time constant. Okay. So let's do that. So I have 122. 
36 times 24. That's the time constant. Okay. Now this resistor, I typically like to set it to the same value as this. Okay. So I'm going to set this to 5k. So that means I'm going to solve for this, uh, the integrator cap. So basically, it's this times this divided by the integrator cap. The integrator cap, I'm going to, uh, integrator resistor, I'm going to set to 5k. So I'm going to divide by 5k. Okay. Uh, hang on, I did something wrong. 122. Negative 6 times 24 equals divided by 5. K. K. And this is 7, 8, 9. So I need to make this 587 nano. Set this to 5k. Okay. Let's see, what did I have? 585, 587. Okay. Should be close enough. Okay, so now. Okay, so now. This looks like it's at the same spot as the other one. It uh, looks like this is uh, about 80, anywhere from 70 to 80, okay? And that should correspond or should match with a pole in the output filter. about in the 70 so that's correct okay so I have that lined up okay I'll go back to the main so I should have okay so now this is straight okay there was a little bump here so now we have this part okay so now we want to match this time constant this and this and that and these two time constants. So, let's see what we get. Okay. So now we're going to do 0 0.261 times 122 exponent negative 6. Okay. Divided by 5000. And 6.3 nano, 6, 6.3 nano, okay, 6.3 nano, 6.3 nano, okay, so now this time constant equals this time constant, so I should pretty much be done, and there, so now I have a beautiful uh, loop gain, and See if I can. How far out can I go? I'll increase it to 10 meg. Okay, so that looks good. And I have a bandwidth of approximately okay, 457. Okay, and I have a face margin of 93 degrees, which is great. Okay. Uh, on this one, typically this will drop off, okay, because there's a bunch of other components that we're not modeling. It doesn't roll off as much, but typically this, the face will dip below the zero dB, uh, zero dB uh, line. And as a matter of fact, there's another uh, me a figure of merit. It's called the gain margin, and that's another thing that that we look at. Okay, so let's go to the lab, see if we can duplicate these uh, plots and put everything together. Okay, 
here I'm in the test bench and right here I have the the clever scope uh, it's uh, it's displaying the spectrum display and it's actually displaying the gain at face this is the gain in red and then the blue is the face okay and of course you get the frequency and the clever scope is actually a USB uh, oscilloscope okay it comes from a company called clever scope obviously and uh, it's got channel A channel B and then in the back it's got a function generator okay and I have the function generator connected right now to a injection transformer and the reason is that uh, we're going to inject the signal a disturbance actually we're going to uh, inject the sine wave and uh, you need to isolate the uh, the function generator from the power supply so basically the signal comes in here goes through the primary and then the secondary go to the are connected to these two uh, test points and then this is ground so basically I have three wires I have my two signal the output of the transformer and then your ground now the place that I'm going to be injecting and I'll use the schematic here I have a resistor it's approximately 10 ohms and I'm connecting the transformer basically here's the function generator and here's the transformer and I'm connecting right across the resistor so what it does it gives you a wiggle and it propagates it comes back and you can measure channel A here and you can connect channel B here and you can connect and uh, measure the, the total uh, gain and phase of the circuit but what we're going to do first is we're going to verify the frequency response of the output and uh, output stage and what we're going to do is we're going to connect channel A here which is the output of the error ramp and then we're going to connect channel B to the output so basically we're getting this, the gain from this point to that point which is it's your output filter it's also referred as your power stage okay now this is what we should expect should have expect a kind of like a low pass filter and then this rolls off at about negative 20 db per decade and this is the pole and I have a pole that I simulated at about 80 Hertz and then I have a zero here and the zero is about 5.7 Hertz okay and of course this is your face okay so let me go ahead and connect it actually it's already connected just want to uh, show you that uh, where the connections are and I'm using regular test points probes yes. and if I dug on this you can see that it goes to the function uh, actually to the clariscope so this is the output right here that's the output of the error amp so I'm connecting it there and then up here here if you notice I have my uh, my rectifier and I have my filters three filters so that's the output okay so let me just move this okay so right there I'm hooked to the output okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and run this 
and see how it works. And as you can see, here's the face. No, that's the game. And that's the face. And if you notice, this is the linear part. That's where you, go. Uh, you have the negative 20 dB per decade. And then you start having the zero. Okay, so I already measured right here. And this pole is at about 40 hertz. Calculated 80, so it's a little bit off. But that shouldn't be a problem. And then I picked this low point where it went start going up. Because if you see where, if you put your pin, kind of a straight line, and you can see that it starts deviating upward there. So that's about 5.7. And I believe that's very close to what I calculated. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So this kind of verifies the model that uh, it is correct. Okay, so the next thing is we want to go ahead and uh, look at the, the output of the error amp, or actually the frequency response of the error amp. That'll be the next one. And let me go ahead and set it up. Here I have the test probes. I have the test probe. I moved it to the output of the error amp. And this is the input of the error amp right there. Okay. And this here, these two test points are test points that are across a resistor. There's a resistor down there that's 10 ohm I call that my venable resistor and this is the test point these two are the test point that I use to take the overall loop gain okay so I have my roll off uh, capacitor right there and I put a cap no not, not a cap a variable resistor so I could tweak it and these right here or my roll off or not a roll off my integrator cap so those are the three I went ahead and uh, originally the resistor that I was using was a 5k I went ahead and went up to a 10k because I wanted to optimize uh, the reading or my loop anyway here is the clever scope I press start And I should start taking data. Okay, so you can see in red is the frequency response of the error app. And then as it hits about 40 uh, hertz, then it pulls up. So if it pulls up, that's a zero. And then it settles down to a zero dB. This is your mid band gain. And then right here it starts going down, downward, that's your pull. So, and originally when I had the 5K, uh, the zero was at about 80. And since the output filter measured 40 hertz, I went ahead and reduced it from, uh, uh, actually increased the resistor the integrated resistor from 5k to 10k and by doing that it moved it it moved this zero from 80 hertz to 40 hertz so it should match even better now and that 
basically remain about the same. So, and this is at uh, 5.7 kilohertz, and you can see that's the phase response. Okay, so now since these poles and zero should match and should cancel the pole and zero of the output filter. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and measure the total gain. Okay, so connect it right there. Okay, and excuse me. Since this is a scope, what is what it's doing is it's uh it needs two signals. If you notice, I only have one signal here. It's the red. I have one signal that is missing. I'll change this to twelve, or actually thirteen. 13 volts okay and I see it here and then I press fit okay and then I just wait a little bit because I want to be sure that that the signal doesn't overdrive the analog to digital converters in the scope and basically what it what it's doing is it's uh injecting the signal and the scope is of course reading and you can see the little wiggle there that's uh, the low frequency and what the scope is doing is doing an FTT and from the FTT it gets uh, uh, the magnitude and the phase and plots it in the uh, on the spectrum display however uh, it works very very well I've been pleased with it and it, uh, I've been able to do quite a bit with it so far okay so that looks pretty good doesn't look like uh, it's overdriving so I'm happy with that I'll go ahead and minimize it okay and let's see let it run one more time Okay, this here's part of the graph. Here is your gain, and if you notice, it's pretty straight. And then your phase is approximately 90 degrees. Okay, and if you notice, it's straight, and that's what I want it. I want to cancel the poles and zeros. from the error amp and the output filter and I got a pretty good plot right there okay now anyway, uh, they want to show this that uh, right there that that's the loop response for nominal okay and I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 24 volts which is the minimum that I had designed it for so I'll go ahead and make it 25, 25, okay, 25 volts, and then we'll see how it it affects it. You should see a little bit of effect. Okay. So restarting. Okay, and you can see a little bit of effect right there. I'm not sure you can see it, but just, you can see it in the face or the yeah the face just a little bit. So basically, you want to make sure that you do the open loop under three conditions: your minimum input voltage your nominal voltage and then your maximum voltage okay so
so if it works in all three conditions and you don't see any instability then you have a very stable supply and this didn't change too much it looks pretty good okay now by pressing this icon fr 0 db it moves this cursor to the zero axis where it crosses zero db which is unity gain gain of one and we should be able to tell you what the phase and gain is uh, the phase is 90 degrees 90.7 degrees and the crossover frequency is 910 hertz okay so that's kind of close to what I had calculated in the spy simulator okay looks good and let me try high line or at least go up to 32 maybe that should be 32 32 and see how it works or how it looks actually the measurement is here so it's going to recycle cycle again you can see the, the frequency counter or the frequency generator is counting 2.534 Hertz and so forth so it's counting up so you should start seeing some of the effects right there you can see that it's changing okay so that looks pretty good doesn't look like it's changing so I'm very happy with this so I think I already decided what the final values will be so I'm happy with this so this is the way that uh, you can set the, the loop of a power supply and then you can verify it if you have a FRA uh, unfortunately most of the FRAs out there are very expensive uh, but I happen to see on the EEV blog uh, an advertisement for the Cleverscope notice that they did a face and gain plot and I uh, bought it and uh, so far it's been working well uh, there are little idiosyncrasies you have to get used to it It uh, you have to set up a bunch of uh, uh, menus and uh, you have to set it up uh, accordingly for it to work properly and once you get used to it then uh, it works very well uh, I've been in contact with uh, the designer of the Cleverscope he's going to try and see if he can simplify the operation of it uh, he may do a, a dedicated menu but uh, that's in the future and uh, but uh, as far as being able to take open loop gain and measure the response of the output filter and the air ramp it does very very well okay well hopefully this video will help you uh, help those that are interested in designing power supplies and perhaps that need loops and uh, and uh, hopefully there will be some other videos of other design aspects uh, that I will be making in the future thank you for watching